Hey guys, it's me again. I have a crazy idea that I'm going to put forth here. Um, I'm going to be reading The Raven with each stanza as a different celebrity impersonation. I'll put little word bubbles to tell you who it is. Alright, um, this might be a two-parter, because The Raven is long. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember rolled its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had bought, sought to borrow, from my books or cease of sorrow, sorrow laden for the lost Lenore. For the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels na named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the soaking, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to the still beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is." nothing more. Hmm. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is that I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. That scarce was so sure I heard you, here I opened wide the door. Darkness there and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token. And the only word there was spoken was the whispered word Lenore. There I whispered and an echo murmured back the word Lenore, merely this and nothing more. Back into the chamber tapping, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard the tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that it is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what there it is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and let this mystery explore. It is the wind, and nothing more. Open there I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, there stepped a stately raven of saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped to stayed he, but with mine of lord a lady still perched, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven, Ghastly grim and ghastly raven, wandering in from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on, light pallid, on night's plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marvel that this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly. Though its answer of little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet blessed with seeing bird above its chamber door bird with breast above the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such a name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on its placid bust, spoke only, that if one word, if its soul, in that one word he did outpour, nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore. Till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore, of oh, never, never more. 
But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul in the smiling. Straight I wheeled in the cushioned seat in front of the bird and busting door. Then upon a velvet sinking, I betook myself to, Flint, to Lincoln. Fancy and the fancy, thinking what is this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, of ominous bird of yore, meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat in guessing, but no syllable expressing, to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that with the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloated o'er? She shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the egg grew denser, performed from an unseen sense, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I called, thy goth hath, thy god hath sent thee. By these angels he hath sent thee. Respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff o'er this kind lepenthe, and forgot this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. You guys all like this one. Prophet, I say, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil. Whether tempter sent, and whether tempest tossed. Thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead, tell me, tell me I implore, quoth the raven nevermore. <clears throat> Prophet, I said I, thing of evil, prophet seal if bird or devil, by that heaven bends us, by that God we both adore. Still this soul with horror laden, if within the distant Aiden, they shall clasp a sudden maiden, whom the angels name Anor, clasp a rare and rated maiden, of whom the angels name Anor, quote the raven nevermore. By that word, our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked of starting. Get thy, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that la, thy of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit thy bust above my door, and take thy beak out from my heart, and take thy from off my form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And as the raven never fledding, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of palace above my chamber door. As the, uh, the eyes are given all the seeming of a demon's that is streaming, of the lamplight o'er him and streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. Alright, I'm going to edit this and put all the word bubbles and stuff in there. But in the meantime, let's see if you guys can guess who those are. Um, I realize some, were, some are a lot better than others, but I think I got most of them down pretty well. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Hope you guys like it. Comment and subscribe. Seacrest, out! Okay, I hate Ryan Seacrest. I don't know why I did that. I just felt like I should do a 19th impression. Whatever. Later, guys.